Alright, in this mini lesson we are going to talk about basic word order and universal grammar. Um, so when we talk about the basic word order of a language, we're talking about these three units, right? We're talking about the verb, the subject, and the object, which we mark as V for verb, S for subject, and O for object. Now distinguishing between the subject and the object, we like to think of it, it's very easy in English because the subject comes before the verb and the object comes after the verb in English and so we just base that on our word order. But if we're going to talk about these occurring in different word orders, we have to talk um, more about what is meant by subject um, and object. And in general, the subject is a more agenty thing and the object is a more patienty thing, right? So this would be if we're if we're talking about our labeling that we've done with subject and object alignment, this would be whatever we call A and this is whatever we call P. So that's another way to think of subject and object. Um, so we have here um, we have here three items which we can put into these orders. These are all the possible word orders um, for languages. And surprisingly, you know, if if there was nothing interesting underlying this, we would expect them to be all about 16% of the world's languages would be in each category. But this is not at all what we see. Um, what we see in reality is that SOV is about 45% of the world's languages. So that's the most common one, followed very closely by SVO, which is about 42% of the world's languages. Um, and then VSO has about 9% of the world's languages. Um, VOS has about 3%. Um, OVS has 1%. And OSV is less than 1%. It's only a couple of languages where this is the case. So you notice that really it's these two make up most of it. There's a, a non-negligible number that have VSO and the rest of them are really very rare. Right, um, uh, so this tells us that there's something interesting underlying this. We will talk in another video maybe, but certainly you can read in the chapter um, uh, about how to identify whether a language is SOV or SVO or VSO, so on and so forth. Um, just assume that you can identify this, um, and once you can identify this, this is the, the layout of these. Um, so one of the things that, that um, linguists like to do is uh, try to account for the data in the world world's languages which with is with the same sort of underlying structure right so here we have some very different surface level forms um, and we would like to be able to say that yeah they show up with different word orders but logically they all work the same way. You can have a subject, a verb, and an object, and they have the same semantic relationships to each other regardless of what order they show up in. Um, so I'm just going to very talk, briefly talk about the way that we can explain some of these word orders um, very easily. In another video, I will tackle um, VSO. This is exceptional, which we will see in a, in a minute why this is so exceptional. Um, uh, but VSO is pretty easy to derive, it just is a little more difficult than some of these. So here we have a lovely, very simplified syntax tree of English for the sentence, Simon eats apples. We have here a, an S, a V, and an O, right? English is an SVO language, which puts it in this category with 42% of the world, world's languages. Um, now, if we wanted to, to transform this into an SOV language, a member of this category, all that we have to do with this tree right? We have that same tree with an NP on top and, a, and then a VP, a verb phrase, and then a noun phrase and a verb, right? So all that we're doing to make this S O V is essentially rotating this like a mobile, right? This is like, if you've seen a mobile, this is essentially all you're doing is rotating this little verb phrase, right? So we say that this, this is going to be a, this language has head final, 
verb phrases. And this has a head initial verb phrase. And all we've done is rotate it, um, right? Um, what this word head final means is that this is a verb phrase, and the last thing in the verb phrase is the verb that it's named after, right? This is a, a head initial verb phrase because it's a verb phrase, and the, last, and the first thing in the verb phrase is the verb, right? So that's what head initial and head final mean. Um, so th we have now shown how to create this and how to create this. Right, the two most common word orders are just done by switching the order of the verb phrase. Um, uh, if you read the chapter, you'll find out the reason that subjects like to come first has more to do with information structure, which we talked about last week, um, and uh, the the you know wanting to hear the causer first. Right, so the reason that the subject occurs on this side more often is because of that. But we can also do the same thing that we did with the, the verb phrase to this top phrase, right? We take the S, we have our two branches, but instead of putting the verb phrase on the right, we put the verb phrase on the left, and we put the noun phrase on the right, right? Um, and now we can have our head initial verb phrase, in which case we have this, which gets us a V O S word order, or we have this. Which gets us an O, V, S word order. Now, once you start studying syntax, um, most syntacticians don't think that this is the actual structure for the V-O-S over here and the, um, and the O-V-S word order. Most syntacticians now think that these are derived in a different way, right? But this, this is just our regular syntax um, flexibility is to just switch the order of these individual phrases. So here we have um, a head initial verb phrase and a head final verb phrase and in both of these this would be I guess a head final and a head initial this is this is not really how this this part works but you can switch it around and you get different orders so the two that we have not accounted for in this method and cannot account for simply using this kind of tree structure are the VSO, which we really need to account for because 9% of languages is not, is not nothing, um, and the OSV, which, you know, is very small, and that could even just be, you know, individual linguists' errors in understanding how a language really works and what the basic word order is, right? So this is such an uncommon word order that you almost don't need a good explanation for it because it really is just a couple of languages. Um, but... We are going to provide in the next video an explanation for VSO word order, so get excited. It's going to be much more syntax.